Amen. Everybody stand to their feet. Give a hand clap of praise for this morning. Oh, we thanking Jesus for this rain out here. We, hey, we've been in a drought ourselves. And Lord, see fit that we need this. We need a little wetness out there. I felt it this morning too, but I thank God for waking me up and giving me activities of my limbs on this morning. Amen. Amen. Just glad everybody could join us this morning to hear God's blessed word. We're going to open up with a word of prayer. Lord, we come to you as humble as we know how, Lord. Just thank you for this morning, Lord Jesus. Just thank you for giving the activity of all our limbs, Lord Jesus. Just breathing one more breath into us so we can see a day that we haven't seen, Lord Jesus. We just thank you, Lord Jesus, for the women of faith as they went on their sabbatical, Lord, as you brought them to and fro, Lord Jesus, with no hurt, harm, or danger, Lord Jesus. We just ask you today, Lord Jesus, as you use me, Lord, I just ask that hide me behind this sacred desk, Lord. And we thank you on today, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The title, oh, go ahead. Amen. As the kids go to their classes. The chest. This lesson is about bliss for faithfulness. Boy, it was it was a good lesson. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I mean, it was you know it, it's a whole lot of not just these scriptures that was in this. I mean, you know, if you so many other parts of the Bible, Matthew 10 and 41 about giving a prophet of water. And, and, you know, you get a prophet's reward, you know, and it's it just all that just tied into it, you know. But we're going to read the aim for change, which is by the end of this lesson, we will tell how the widow Zarephath was blessed for her faithfulness to do as the prophet instructed her. Feel confident that God can reward sacrificial faithfulness and plain ways to support people and causes as acts of faithfulness to God. Could I get somebody to read the in focus? Amen. Anybody got anything to add? Well, when I was reading that, you know, I kind of thought about me driving, driving trucks. And I like getting up, I like going in early, so I won't have to deal with the traffic. But sometimes I go in later. But in the recent past couple weeks, there's a whole lot of, been a whole lot of accidents. And even though I'm going in later, if I'd have went in at the time that I wanted to go in, I could have been in that accident. But God God was looking out for me when I wasn't even, I wasn't even paying attention to that. They told me I come in at six o'clock, I want to come in at four. But there was an accident on 85 at five. So if I'd have been going that way, who knows? But God has seen fit to me to come in after the accident already happened and I can go around it. 
It's just things like that that, you know, you got to listen to the Holy Spirit. And God is in everything. Some people, some people look, well, man, why does this happen? God is in it anyways, even though you might not see it because you're not going to see everything right then and there. It might take some time afterwards, and you'd be like, oh, yeah, okay. If I was there, you know, but God was looking out for me. He was looking out for my good. And we're going to go into the background. It was before it started in the earlier um, scriptures. King Ahab, he was the king. He wasn't a believer. He was a believer of, he was a Baal worshiper, basically. So when him being a Baal worshiper, he was, because Baal was the, the god of the storm and uh, fertility. So if Baal didn't say it was going to be a drought, he wouldn't believe him. But God had already told Elijah, which Elijah came to the Ahab to tell him that. But he wasn't believing that because Baal didn't tell him. But, you know, as we go into the, uh, the verses, this basically it, it focuses on Elijah's ability to perform miracles. It also demonstrates the way God cares for those who love and serve him. God was taking care of Elijah because he, he, he loved him and he served him. Could I get somebody to read verses 8 and 9? I got anything to add to that? God has always looked out for Elijah. Elijah didn't ever need want anything. But this time, God had something else planned for him. Because you got to look at it. You know, he had to be faithful. He had to believe what God was telling him for him to go to the people. I don't know how to spell I don't know how to say it. I call it the people. What is um well, I meant the Z word, Zarephath. And, you know, because that was in Baal's, that was in Baal, all them people was at Baal worshippers, you know. And so for him to tell him to go there, he was like, you know, you would be skeptical for somebody to tell you to go somewhere by yourself and you don't know anything about that place. And, you know, all the people against the person that told you to go, they all against him. So when you go there, he was, he was faithful over that by doing what God said. He didn't hesitate. He went. And then let me get somebody. Let me, I'm going to ask y'all a question since y'all quiet this morning. Y'all don't want to talk to me this morning. Okay. They ain't going to talk to me this morning. I'm gonna, somebody going to talk to me this morning. <laughs> you got something?
but see, and then going through the temp agency, you went through the temp agency, right? Those two week jobs can turn into, I think I worked at that job for two years as a temp. They didn't never hire, but it was more than two weeks. And so you never know. You might come in, your work ethic gonna speak for itself. God opened the door for you to get in there. Now it's up to you to do it. Now it's up to you. And then I got a question. Somebody else. Because if she show up, Because you just show up, he's going to show up the rest of the way. You just got to be there. A willing vessel. That's all you got to do is a willing vessel. And he's going to do the rest. Oh, Jesus. A question to y'all. What does Elijah's commitment to following God and their shared commitment to caring for each other teach us about hospitality? Yeah, hospitality. God, yeah. She believed in Baal. She believed in Baal. somebody to read verse 10 first because since you touched on verse 10 already so we're going to go through Woman. 
verse 10, when he got there, he saw the woman. But in usual, how everything is set up, you usually have a man out there to determine who's friend or foe, just like we have a door, doorkeeper. We got to, he can't let no, no enemies in here. But it so happened to be that widow woman that he, was, he didn't know for surety, but he asked her for that water. When she brought him the water, he kind of figured, yeah, that's, that's her. That's the one that God sent me to talk to. So then after she was getting the water, he asked for some bread. So that's when she had told him, I don't have that money. He said, just give it to me. And then you and your son will have, will have everlasting, you will never run out. And I mean, you got to think about that. Women, if a man come up to you and say, give me your last and you know you got kids, that's a thought in your mind. Well, wait a minute. My kids got to eat. I got to eat. I don't, even, I don't even know this man. You, so she was... She was a believer. My, my, my take on this, she was, she was just, she was a believer, but didn't know she was a believer. I mean, she was, see, even though she was standing at Pagan Town, it didn't say that, you know, it didn't say that she served Baal. It didn't. But it didn't say that, you know, served God either. So she, didn't nobody know. It didn't say, it didn't specify what, who she served, but that prophet came to her for some water, and she gave it to him. And after that, she get a profit reward. So her flour would never eat. Her oil, her oil can never go empty. But then, go ahead. But then you got to look at it on the other end, knowing that as a woman, what, what would y'all think? Let me get some women to tap in. Yo, you meet a man that you just out there doing what you're doing. A man comes to you ask you for something to eat, you know you ain't got that much. I mean, what, what would go in y'all, what would, what would you think about first? <laughs> That's true, you know. This is makes sense. <laughs> Be real. That's why I was asking the women of faith. Hey, put Your ministry. Right, well, my bad. Go ahead. Uh huh? You see it again?
Yeah, go. You. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're gonna get your blessings because you did what you did. You you did WWJD. What would Jesus do? You did what Jesus would do. He would have gave, but it's on her now. So if she went out there and did something crazy with the money. That's not on you. That's on her. She got to answer to God for that. I got you, minister. This is Chris. <laughs> Minister Jackson. Take them. Yeah, that's the thing. Nah. Nah, yeah. Yeah. Nah, if you're hungry, we can go get something to eat. But, um, but it's just funny you said that. I was looking at, um, it was an episode on TV. They was doing a report up there in New York about that. The guy was, you know, he was panhandling. He would even get in his, I think he had something like a, he had a Lexus or something like that. His Mercedes. He had some some car that I wouldn't, you know. I'm working every day and I get, you know, I ain't even looking at it. But people give him money and he, at the end of the day, he get in his car, go around there, change clothes, and get in his car and ride off. You know. So that's what I got you. Kid. That's that's where that spirit of discernment come from. And then when you was talking about that she was already gonna die. You know, it, it, even though she already knew they was going to die, you know, she still had to, it still had to be a thought in her head because she would have died soon. You know, I mean, you even though you petitioned that, yeah, after I eat this, I'm going to go ahead and go. It might not be as soon as you want to go, but, you know, but that, well, that goes, that, there's no right or wrong answer to that or how that, how that came up, came about. Brother Kenny.
spirit. God didn't send me to that woman. I felt compassion in my heart, but he let me see by staying in Walmart for extra 10 minutes what was really going on. That's not mean I'm going to stop helping people, but you got to be led to help certain people. You know, so everybody, you know, everybody that preach and teach the word ain't no God either. Oh, you're right. Didn't you have your hand up? Oh, was Sister Peace? Somebody had their hand up. I know somebody had their hand up. <laughs> I thought she had hers back up there. Was Sister Chrissy? Uh huh. You did? Okay. But see, Dick, you hit the you hit the word obedience. Obedience. That's the biggest. That's the biggest thing in this in this list. Obedience. You got to be faithful to him, but it takes obedience to be faithful. If you don't have obedience, you're not going to be faithful to what, what God is telling you. If he tells you to do it, you got to do it right then and there. No way around the bus. You can't question. You can't question what God is telling you. Can I get, can I get a reader from? Say what? Say that again. Well, see, compassion is you think about it for a minute. Compassion is. If you're going by the way you feel, you're just going to do it without even thinking about, well, did somebody ask you what here? You didn't even think about that. That's going off of what, what you feel. But compassion, you sit there, you're like, well, let me think about it. You know, let me see. I got this, I got this. Okay, well, I can still. That's my that's my take on the difference between compassion and going off the way you feel. I mean, I could be I ain't no I ain't Webster, but that's what I that's that's what I that's what I that's what, that's my answer. Sis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, that's the compassion. That's because you, you you think about it first. See, if you have went off the way you felt, you just gave it to him. Even if he, you know you didn't have it, you just still just gave it to him. That was what, that same thing about Brother Kenny. Brother Kenny was just saying the same thing. But see, but yeah, that's the thing. That, but <laughs> Minister Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, compassion would work in their favor because compassion, you don't, we well, know. Yeah, because you, you'll think about it with compassion. If you're going off emotions, you just like, oh, man, they love me. Yeah. See? You, <laughs> well, you, That's a good plate too. That's definitely a good plate. But give him glory right now. Everybody give him glory for us being here today. Lord Jesus. But I got you. But speaking of the woman, since we were just talking about compassion and emotions, that could be her the answer of what the widow did. Because like I said, we didn't she didn't she didn't believe in God. She didn't believe in we didn't know what she believed in. So she she might have moved on emotion. Or she could have moved on compassion. You know, and it's funny how we brought that up. But, you know, that wasn't, you know, that wasn't in the list about the emotions and compassion. But, hey, that's why we're here. Minister Jackson. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. 
Amém? Amém? <laughs> Amen. Take care of me. Yes, sir. Amen. Because, and see, it's that you look at that, you're looking at their lifestyle. When they're looking at your lifestyle, that's, that's, how they gonna, that's, how, that's why they came to you anyway. Because they're looking at your lifestyle. It ain't just, it was a whole lot of people that walked in Walmart. But she came to you. It wasn't just, she saw the God in you, D. It wasn't, it wasn't nothing. It, you, came, you, were, you came in on that one. But that's the thing, we're looking at them. We need to examine ourselves. Bishop, we've been talking about that. Examining ourselves. The Christian walk. If we walk in Christian like, you got a whole lot of people going to come at us. Good and bad. But there goes the spirit of discernment again. You have to know what's the good and what's the bad. Minister, go ahead. Thank you. The light. Amen. It's everybody else. <laughs> hey. Lord Jesus. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me see. Let me get sis in the back. Amen. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, I got what you're saying. Instead of reaching in here, we need to reach out there. We need to reach out there. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Sister Trina. Yeah. 
her list. Mm -hmm. And we will get a blessing. And that's, that's what I'm going to leave because we got to close. I'm going to leave you with something. Be careful not to overlook God's small daily provisions, hoping for a bigger blessing. Amen. Amen. You want me to say it again? Be careful not to overlook God's small daily provision, hoping for a bigger blessing. Amen. Amen. We're going to close out. Can I get a Sister Trina? Close us out in prayer. Father God, we just praise you and thank you, Lord, for this day. Father God, we just thank you for provision. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives. And we're just asking you, God, just to continue to move. Let us continue to have compassion and love for one another, Father God, to do and be what you've called us to do. We thank you for the word, Father God, and, and the man you brought the word through, and just asking you to continue to bless, bless the next service that's coming up, Lord, and just continue to have your way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Come on, come on and bless his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you believe that your life is not your own, come on and give him some praise. Hallelujah. Come on and open up your mouth. Hallelujah. 
and I dare you to give yourself away right now. That problem, that situation, that circumstance, those people, come on, that bill, give it all away to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and bless his name. Oh, Jesus. Come on and lift his name. Come on, let's exalt his name. He's worthy, y'all. He's worthy. We serve a faithful God. We serve a God that's so big. No matter what comes your way, he has a head all around you. So whatever the devil is trying to do, it won't work. It won't work. It won't work. Though it form, it shall not prosper. Hey! It won't work. Tell yourself it won't work. Not today, devil. It won't work. I've been through too much. I've seen too much. But I'm here to tell you that our God is so faithful. And he is so awesome. He is the God of the hills and the God of the valley. So no matter how low you are, he know how to reach you. Come on, somebody. There's no mountain high enough that he can't look over and pick you up. If you give yourself away, everything that's unlike God, give yourself away. He wants it all today. He wants it all. I don't know who I'm talking to. But he wants it all. He wants it all. That problem that you face. He said bring it to me. You can't handle it. Good God Almighty. Bring it to me. Bring it to me. Bring it to me. If it's your mind. Bring it to me. He's already here. I wouldn't miss him right now. I'm talking about a God. He's your refuge. He's your stroll tower. He's your deliverer. My God. Just worship him. I just need you to worship him in this moment. Can you just follow the spirit? Oh my God. Just follow the spirit. Go on, you Pastor Jamar. Come on, come on.
here right now. Use me. Use me.
Come on and bless him. If you know you surrender it all, go on and continue to tell him, my life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you.
do feel like you don't need nothing from God. Sometimes we feel like we all right. We get in the house of God and go through the emotions. Well, baby, it ain't about the emotions this morning. I'm ready for the movement of God. Because as long as access has been granted unto me, I'm going to get everything that I need from him. Hallelujah. I can't find what I need in the deacon. I can't find what I need in the deacon nest. I can't find what I need in my children. Sometimes we can't even find what we need in our mates. But everything that we have need of, God say you're standing up. Access has been granted. Hallelujah. You won't be denied. Some stuff has been delayed, but this is the day that you won't be denied. This is the day if you choose to walk in obedience, if you choose to walk into the access that's been granted unto you, you won't be denied. Because God said, I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. You shall be the lenders and not the power. Whatever you need, what can I count? And access has been granted unto you. Under an open heaven. I don't know about nobody else. But when something is open before me, I try to find my way inside. I try to get what I need from God. Hallelujah. Regardless of what it looks like or even what it feels like. Access has been granted unto me. Right here under this open heaven. The Bible declares that no good thing will he withhold from us. Those that love him. And if it's somebody in here that loves the Lord this morning, you might as well tell him thank you in advance for what he wants to do in your life. Tell him thank you for the access being granted unto you. He's already given it to us. He's already given it to us. I don't know about you, but the Bible declares that he's given me keys to the kingdom. And under an open heaven, that means I'm still walking in the kingdom of God. And regardless of which state I'm in, regardless of which country I'm in, I'm still under the open heaven of God. Hallelujah. See, you can try to figure it out all you want to. You can try to figure, well, why they acting funny like that? Why they jumping all over the place like that? Because somebody recognized that access has been granted unto them. Uh-huh. Somebody recognized that they got some keys that they can use. Uh-huh. Glory to God. If you want it, you can have it. Hallelujah. Ain't no time for playing church. You supposed to be the church. Ain't no time for form and fashion. Ain't no time for looking cute. It's about giving God glory. Tell don't know about nobody else. But when there's been something sent to kill me, something to take me out, all up in my face, thinking I ain't got no ability to protect myself, even in my sleep, even in my slumber state, thinking I ain't got the mind to tell my spirit to go ahead and live. nobody else but I shall not be denied I shall not be denied the life that God promised me I shall not be denied the promises that God sent for my life I shall not be denied the healing that he called for my life I shall not be denied I wouldn't leave here in a state of denial the enemy ain't got no authority. It's what's in me. And great is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I've been wrapped up. I've been rooted and grounded in 
in the love of Christ Jesus. Though the weapons may fall, the Bible declares that they shall not prosper. No weapon that's formed against me, I can go a step further. No weapon that's formed against me or anything connected to me, anything attached to me, it shall not prosper. A thousand may fall at my side, ten thousand may fall at my right hand, but the Bible declares that it shall not come, not thy dwelling. I shall live and not die. See, Jesus came that I might have life, not just any kind of life, but he said have life and have it more abundantly. Oh, I'm going to live. I'm going to use my key. Use your key. Use your key. Whatever you need. Right here in this season. Right here in this time. Because the heavens is wide open. Because access has already been granted. What do you mean? What kind of access? Well, baby, if you got to ask. You might want to check your key. You might be at the wrong house. Cause I know what my keys belong to. I know about my car key. I know about my house key. Caleb, I even know about the barn key. Regardless of how many times I use it, I have some keys. And I know that I can get in there and get anything that I need. When I need it. I even got a key to Gracie house. So if she can't get out and she need a little help because I've had access granted unto me, or oh, I can go see about her. Hallelujah. But see, we can't get excited when we don't know what our keys are for. What I look like rolling up in Concord with my house keys trying to get in your house. I know access has been granted, but some stuff I shouldn't cross the boundaries. Some stuff I shouldn't try to get in when God ain't called me to be there. What? Oh, I got Bible. I'm so glad you shouted. You might as well go on and give him glory now. Access granted. And you seen the movies where some stuff, because the stuff is so valuable, it don't need the average key. Sometimes you got to drop your glasses off and get right up on the peephole so access will come open unto you. Say, so what do you mean? Because that's meant just for you. Only your pupil dilated at the right centimeters will get you where you need to be in God. See, I can't come up peeping over at Minister Shante House trying to make my eye open up what God has opened for her. I got to get what he got for me. I can't get it dancing off your coattail. I can't get it dancing off your ponytail. I got to get what God has for me. Amen. The way he had me to get it. Stop worrying about trying to shout like somebody else. Trying to speak in tongue like somebody else. Trying to get what, trying to get how they got what they got. But if we just look to God, we can all get what we need from him. Stop worrying about other folk relationships. Get your own relationship with God. See, because at the end of the day, what God has for me with my name on it, if your name is Yvonne and my name is Patricia, guess what? Yvonne got a pile and Patricia got a pile. And when, amen, get your pile and I'm going to get my pile and we're going to rejoice with our piles. Hallelujah. Because we got enough for the overflow. And if you ain't got your keys right, we're going to shout right there.
there with you until you figure out how to get your access into the kingdom of God to get what you need. Everybody don't know. Everybody don't know. And if you don't know, quit trying to pretend. Don't fake it thinking you're going to make it. You ain't going to make it like that there. I played that game. And the game came back and played me. I'm going to make it plain as I can. I played the game. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Of sowing seeds in a ministry. And the more I sold seeds, Sister Mason, the more I lost cars, the more I received eviction notices, the more I didn't have enough to pay my light bill, the more they talking about coming and taking my furniture, the more I sold seeds. You know why I was, I was sowing the seeds out of myself? I was sowing the seeds out of a form and out of a fashion. I was sowing seeds because I saw somebody else sow a seed. And I said, well, maybe that'll work for me. I was sowing seed off of pressure. Because they was, you know, you got some people that'll tell you if you don't sow, you ain't going to never grow. Will the devil be a liar? Because if I sow out of my need, if I ain't got no money, baby, I got some time. If I ain't got no job, I got some time. I can give you whatever I got, God. It ain't about the money. It ain't about the price that I put in the basket. It's about the relationship that I have with God. It's about me using the keys that he's given me to get to the kingdom. And I kept on sowing. I was sowing because I felt sorry because somebody else didn't have their money to sow. I said, well, I'm going to sow for them. You can't sow for nobody else. But I was ignorant in the gospel. Ignorant in the gospel. Now, ain't nothing wrong with sowing because I believe in seed time and harvest time. Or the Bible wouldn't declare it. He would have never had no holy men to write it. So I believe that I sold my way out of some stuff. Everything that I sold my way into... I had to go back and sow my way out of it. And the best part about it, I sold my way out the ministry. Hallelujah. Because any time leadership begin to not follow God, I can't follow you no more. And I don't know how to go without disrespect, so I'm going to sow my way out of here, God. So that when you sever this cord, it won't hurt me and it won't hurt them. Even though they may talk about me and scandalize my name when I leave, but it ain't going to bother me. Because they see every time they turn around, he keep on blessing me. Because now I'm under an open heaven. Now I'm in a place where I'm sowing in good ground. Now I'm in a place where I'm sowing in fertile ground. Now I'm sowing out of love. I'm sowing out of want. And sometimes even out of my need, but never out of grief. I said, oh. So don't get that thing twisted. We ain't supposed to sow. We ain't supposed to throw no money at the apostle's feet. It's in the word. And anything in the word of God, I believe that we can do it. But you better know how you're doing it and why you're doing it. Because sometimes we try to do stuff. Ain't no need of me sowing and I ain't paying no tithe. You know what just happened to me? You know what just happened to me? I sold on top of a big a curse. He already said I'm cursed with a curse. So now I sold on top of it. Won't God to bless me? I got a bigger curse. Because I ain't going to tithe and I'm going to continue to cheat the government and everything that I put in, I'm going to just continue to reap corruption. Why it ain't happening in my house? Well, the heaven is open. I'm glad you didn't shout it. It's still open. I'm going to tell you something. Woke me up like never before. Done heard it. Done preached it. Done word it. Done read it. And done heard it again. Done preached it again. Done prayed it again. But sometimes when you're in your weakest state. And God can come right back with the same word. And say preach. In season. Out of season. Rebuke. 